this is Kathy from Her Father's Daughter. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about some of our one word kits. Um, if you ordered a kit, you create which word, what's your motto, what's your word, your goal of the year, whatever it may be, um, and then you're going to create a really nice sign with it. So my word is create, um, so you would get your word cut out in vinyl and it will be weeded for you. You will get a piece of um, pine, it depends on the size of the pond that you end up using, but this is approximately 12 inches. Um, the height will vary just a little bit. You're going to get some um, contact paper or transfer paper to help transfer your design, your vinyl, onto your board. Popsicle stick for kind of rubbing your design. Uh, this is a makeup sponge. We're going to use this to dab our accent color. You're going to get three foam brushes, a base coat, accent color, polyurethane to seal it, Mod Podge to help you with your um, painting the vinyl, a piece of sandpaper, and then there are two options. You can either order the option with a frame or without a frame. If you order with the frame, you'll choose your frame color either with paint or with stain, and I will do that for you. The frame basically is going to attach like this, and I will show you in another video how you can attach your frame. Okay, so to get started, um, we're going to just sand our paper, or our, sorry, our board. This one's pretty good, just to get any rough edges off. Okay, and then I'm going to paint it with my base coat. Um, if you're using a frame, you don't really need to get the sides. I like to kind of prop my wood up with something, it's just a piece of cardboard, so that I can paint it a little easier. So here's my base coat. Um, you will have some options. They usually are something light, something dark. I have some grays, or you could choose a stain. Okay, so I want to give this a good coat. And then I'm going to let it dry. This is acrylic paint, so it does not take too long to dry. And then I'm going to coat it again. If you like more of a translucent or like, I guess, that kind of a look where you can kind of see the wood grain, you could take this and take your paint and add a little water to it to kind of make a wash. Um, so that's an option. I'll show you what that looks like in another video. I like to use my brush with the grain. And then after I'm done with the first coat, just go through and make sure I don't have any drips or something that's going to leave something that I don't want on my sign. Okay, so we're going to wait about 15 minutes for this to dry, and then I'll be putting my second coat on. Okay, my first coat is dry, and I'm just going to sand just so I don't have the ridges from the paint lines just lightly and brush that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my second coat of the base paint. Same thing, just kind of brush it in the direction of the wood. that dry for about 15 minutes and then we'll uh, show you what to do to get your stencil on there. Okay so I ended up putting a third coat on because I wanted it more um, more of a solid and so I took my sandpaper and just sanded all the ridges off and it's nice and smooth now and ready to go to go ahead and put my vinyl stencil on there. So I'm going to put this aside for a minute and show you how we're going to get the stencil onto the board. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is just get a corner of my contact paper, transfer paper, peeled up. And then I'm going to continue to peel that all the way over. I'm going to put this on the top of my stencil. You can see in the stencil where it says create. Um, it's very faint, but this is where the vinyl has been weeded out. So I'm going to take my vinyl and I'm going to place it on top. There should be a little bit of a border. Um, it doesn't have to be all the way around, but you want some sort of a border. I'm 
going to smooth that out and then use my popsicle stick or a credit card that's going to be well shaped just to kind of burnish it to get it sealed. Um, you can try to eliminate some bubbles. And I like to do that on both sides. Again, like I said, the credit card works real well too. Okay, I put my light board underneath my stencil so you can actually see where um, it has been beaded and what it's going to say. And then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, you have your contact paper, transfer paper on top of your stencil with a little bit of edge. And then take the credit card, the popsicle stick, just go over it one more time. Next, we're going to turn it over and try to take a corner and peel back the backing of the vinyl. So you want to leave the corner. You should see some of the white still stuck to the contact paper. Sometimes this is the hardest. Okay, I finally got a corner peeled. So I'm going to turn the corner down and I like to fold it and pull back very close to the stencil itself because sometimes there are middles of letters that tend to pull up and we don't want that to happen. So, so far so good. Oh, so there's an E right here that's trying to come up. I push it back down and sometimes you need to just go back over with your popsicle stick or credit card from behind and just make sure that stays down. And there's my create. So then I'm going to take my board and I want to eyeball it here. It's kind of tricky because it's all white, but I want to get this centered into my board. Looks pretty good. Okay, then I'm going to smooth this on here. Again, you can use your popsicle stick. Out. Make sure it's real smooth. So this part I'm just going to peel back the contact paper and that just leaves my stencil stuck on top of my wood. Oops. Careful there. Okay, so I want to make sure that I don't up, that might not have been totally giant, um, any of the other pieces here. Okay, next step, we're going to take our Mod Podge in a very, very thin coat. This just kind of um, seals the lines so you don't have any, have any bleeding through your stencil. So I want to just go over where my stencil is, where the create word is, just a very light coat. Okay, so my Mod Podge is dry. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my accent color on again. So the only extra supplies that you may need could be some painter's tape. If you see that your opening of your stencil is real close to the edge of it, you may wanna add a little painter's tape just so you don't go over when you're dabbing on your accent color. You don't wanna get it on the back of the board. So I'm gonna put a little bit right there. So I'm gonna take this makeup sponge and dip it in my paint. And again, less is more. I'm just going to do probably two light coats all over the open stencil area. I find that's better than trying to do a thick, heavy coat because acrylic paint is kind of plasticky and sometimes it can just peel the entire portion off. We don't want our letters peeling. Okay, I went ahead and did my second coat of my accent color, so you can see it's all filled in. Two light coats, like I said, is better than one heavy. Um, I like to try to peel this off when it's still kind of wet, but you need to be careful not to uh, get the paint onto the part of the wood you don't want to. Okay, put this away. I didn't include that this would come in the kit, but you are going to need um, this pick, so this will also be included, and you'll see why for some of these middle pieces. 
So sometimes you will expose some of the wood grain, especially if you pull it off this way, which would be with the grain. So what I want to try to do is pull it off against the grain. So I'm going to pull it down this way. Sometimes you do get um, some pieces that just are stubborn and come off anyway. So I'll lift high so I don't get that pea back on there. So you can see it here, I need to pull back my middle part of the C. So this tool works great for that. Get it going and then we can pull it back. Okay. All right, so there's my word create. Um, as you can see, there's just minimal bleeding right here, and what I like to do is after it's totally dry, you can kind of scrape some of that paint off of there to make it a little bit crisper edge. But this is what your sign will look like if you do not have crane. Um, I will also include a little piece in the back, because sometimes they get a little wobbly, a little bit warped, so there will be another piece of wood if you don't have a frame so that it stands up nicely. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to attach my frame. Okay, so we are at the last part before we put the frame on. Um, we want to put some polyurethane on to give a little bit of a sheen. It's a matte polyurethane, so it won't be too glossy, and um, it'll just kind of brighten up our project. Um, one little trick, if you want to save your sponge to use your paint in other projects, if you just cut the end off, it's like brand new. Use it again. Anywho, right, with your last foam brush, you're going to take your polyurethane, and again, I like to go with the grain of the wood. Just put a thin coat. I usually just put one coat on. If you feel like it, you can put two. Um, this is a non-yellowing water-based poly. So if you have a sign that's in your kitchen, polyurethane it. If you splash some spaghetti sauce on it, you should be able to wipe it up without a problem. You know, because that happens every day. Good, even coats, and we'll watch for any bubbles. Uh, then I will show you how to attach the frame.